All right, man. So in today's episode, this is all about coming fully equipped in Christ. You know, we're going to go on this journey together to become fully equipped in Christ. You know, this just it's really um, putting on the armor of God when I say that um, having the attitude of Christ. You know, I want each and every one of us to be prepared for, you know, when hard times come or when the enemy tries to attack us. So this episode is all about becoming fully equipped in Christ. But before we get into all of that. And I want to talk about uh, something that I read in Exodus uh, 19, uh, 9 through 11. And I think it's something really great that we all uh, could take, you know, into our lives and apply it to our lives. But it reads, it says, the Lord says to Moses, I am going to come with you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not go up to do that, that you do not go up the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. He shall surely be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on him. Whether man or animal, he shall not be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they go up to the mountain. Now, I've read a little longer past uh, verse 11. But, uh, you know, I just I got caught up in the moment. But anyways, what is um, Exodus 19.9? through 11 mean what is God trying to tell us so we know Moses was told to consecrate the people this meant getting them physically and spiritually spiritually ready to meet God the people were set were to set themselves apart from sin and every ordinary and every and even ordinary daily routine in order to dictate themselves to God the act of washing and preparing serve to get their minds and their hearts ready. So what is it trying to tell us? When we meet God for worship, we should set aside the cares and preoccupations of everyday life. Use our time of physical preparation to get your mind ready to meet God. That is the ultimate message, man. Get your mind ready to meet God. Get your mind ready to meet God. But I just wanted to share that with you all, man, to start this off. Now we're going to get into what we're really here for, man, becoming fully equipped in Christ. So let's start this thing off, man. You know, let's start this plan off. And remember, you can also read this on the Bible app, man. Just uh, search my name up, Corey Alpo. Um, If you don't have the uh, Bible app, I suggest you download it um, because there's a lot of... uh, things on there that can help you just develop this deeper relationship with God or you know if you're looking to find out who God truly is man I encourage each and every one of you who hear this to go download that out but we're going to get straight into it so there are seven things we will cover so that we can become fully equipped in Christ six of them will make the armor of God and the last thing will show us the attitude we need to have through Christ each day we will focus on an asset that will help us become fully equipped through Christ Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the spirit, and lastly, the mindset of Christ. We must understand how important it is for us to be able to know what the arm of God looks like and why we need to have the attitude of Christ. The enemy is constantly on the prowl and is very strategic in what he does. The enemy's ultimate goal is to destroy us. We as followers of Christ must be fully equipped from head to toe so that we are prepared for the enemy's attack. Here's some scripture from Ephesians 5 verse 1. And it says, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. So we're going to start off with the first thing is the belt of truth. So what do we know that is true about Jesus Christ? We know that the truth will set us free, free of bondage, and most importantly, free from the lie that the enemy tries to stow off our lives. I want to I want to share two truths that you should always remember when when the enemy attacks. One is that you are never alone. 
In Isaiah 41, verse 10, God says, or he, it says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen it. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Number two is God is always sufficient and constant. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses. So that the power of Christ can work through me. That's from 2 Corinthians uh, verse chapter 12 verse 9 i'm sorry 2 corinthians 12 verse 9 so let's strap on our belts and remember the truth that christ jesus has told us even when we may feel weak or afraid the truth will always remain the same you have a couple of scriptures we can take or you can take with you today from john 8 uh, verse 32 it says and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free from Isaiah 41 verse 10 it says don't be afraid for I am with you don't be discouraged for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you I will hold you up with my victorious right hand Hebrews 13 8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 each time he said my grace is all you need my power works best in weakness so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Next, body armor of, God righteous, of God's righteousness. So righteousness is a gift from God. Righteousness belongs to God alone. And for us to receive righteousness, righteousness, we must pursue God and make him the focal point of our lives. Our faith and belief in Christ are what produce righteousness. Everyone who believes in Christ is made righteous by God. We cannot obtain this through human effort. Our behaviors, attitudes, and words must be in the way God has perfected them to be. It is Lord Jesus who paid the ultimate price so that we can be righteous. And here are some scriptures that you can uh, hear and, and, and you know lean on and take with you. From Galatians 5 I hope I'm pronouncing that right But Galatians 5 verse 5 It says But we who live by the spirit Eagerly wait to receive By faith the righteousness God has promised to us So God has promised us this We know that for sure From Isaiah 56 verse 1 it says This is what the Lord says Be just and fair to all Do what is right and good For I am coming soon to rescue you And to, and to display my righteousness among you Proverbs 21 verse 21 Whoever pursues righteousness And unfailing love will find life Righteousness and honor You find life when you pursue Righteousness and unfailing love From Psalms 111 Verse 3 It says everything he does Reveals his glory And, and majesty His righteousness never fails So his righteousness never fails James 1 verse 20 says Human anger, and this is important to understand, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Remember that. So now we're moving on to the shoes. Remember, we're becoming fully equipped in Christ. You know, we have um, our belt of truth. We have the body armor of righteousness. Now we um, are putting on the shoes. And what makes up the shoes? Peace. So peace is a gift from God. God is peace, and the closer we draw to him means the more of his peace we can enjoy. In Psalms, God gives us instructions on how we can draw closer to him. And this is from Psalms 24, 3-5. It says, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. So we must continue to develop our relationship with God so that we can receive more grace and peace. We have to seek God beyond the ways of our understanding. I want you all to know that we have to seek God beyond the ways of our understanding. And here's another uh, way we can draw closer to him. And this is from Hebrews 10, uh, 22. And it says, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. 
For our guilty consciousness have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So ultimately, ultimately, we must become clean and pure because the enemy has a dangerous obstacle that we may encounter. If we become clean and pure as our Father commands us, then we, we will be able to become more aware of the traps that the enemy lays out in front of us. And here's some scripture you all can uh, take with you. This is from Psalms 24, verse 3, and this is a psalm, a psalm of David. It says, Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive, they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Hebrews 10, verse 22 says, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our, guilty, uh, for our guilty consciousness have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. We're almost there, y'all. We're halfway there. Still got a couple more things we have to become equipped with, but we are halfway there. So next is our shield. And what makes up the shield is our faith, the shield of faith. So we know that according to the scripture, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith prompts us to believe in God. It reminds us that God's word is true. So here are some examples of those who show faith throughout the Bible. First is Enoch. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. And here's a scripture from that. It says he disappeared because God took him. For he was taken up. He was known as a person who pleased God. Number two is Noah. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that never that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world. And he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Three is Abraham. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And lastly, we have Sarah. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have, to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. So there were so many acts of faith in the Bible. And two things that faith requires are hoping and believing. Why is this important to know? Ephesians tells us, in addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Now, what are the fiery arrows of the devil? They are, they are the attacks of the enemy. Faith in this case is what deflects those attacks of the enemy. The beauty of the shield is, it, is, it, is its ability to resist any attack. Have hope in this shield of faith and believe that the shield of faith will help protect us from the, from the attacks of the enemy. Excuse me. And here's just some scripture uh, you all can take with you. So in Ephesians 6 verse 16 it says, in addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Hebrews 11, verse 40. For God has something better in mind for us, so, so that they will not reach perfection without us. Moving on to the next thing. We're putting on the helmet. And the helmet is salvation. So what is salvation? Salvation is the is the deliverance of humans from sin and the consequences of sin. Our sin can cause separation from God. So when you hear salvation, think of victory. That's surely what I think of. When I hear salvation, I think of victory. How do we receive salvation? We receive salvation by faith. We must hear the gospel, trust in the Lord, and believe. Salvation is available in Jesus alone. Salvation is dependent on God alone for provision and assurance. So what does the helmet of salvation do for us? It protects, our, it, it protects our minds. If the mind was to become damaged, then the rest of the armor will have little to no use. Salvation is our assurance that we have the ultimate victory in Christ Jesus. God's salvation is permanent. Once we accept Jesus as our Savior, we have protection and deliverance from our sinful nation and Christ by our side when the attacks of Satan come. So here are some ways to keep the helmet functioning. One is that 
We need to renew our minds with the truth of God's word. Renew our minds with the truth of God's word. Two is to remember that victory has been accomplished already. Victory has been accomplished. Three is to don't let doubt seek into our minds. And lastly, and this is big, man, we must put all our hope in God. And here's some scripture that you all can take with you. Ephesians 6 verse 17 says, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, man. And now we get to the sword, which is the spear. And the sword is a weapon that can be used to protect, defend, and attack the enemy. That is why the scripture tells us to take up the sword of the spear. The spear is the word of God. We must know how to recall the word properly so that when the enemy attacks come our way, we can utilize the word in the way God teaches us. How do we know that the sword of the spirit is durable and sustainable? Just take a look at Hebrews 4 verse 12. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The more we understand the word of God, the more effective we will be when facing the attacks of the enemy. Here's some scripture from Hebrews 4 verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the two, than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. From Ephesians 6 verse 17, it says, Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And lastly, y'all, the attitude of Christ. So having the attitude of Christ is having the same mindset Jesus did. Jesus maintained a perfect attitude in every circumstance he came across. Jesus never worried about anything. Instead, he prayed about everything. Jesus was showing us that we should seek God's guidance about everything in our lives and accept God's will, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Being patient, staying hopeful, and being humble are several things Jesus showed us when dealing with trials, suffering, and ridicule. The attitude of Christians should show love and interest in others. We should put others before ourselves. We are asked to work together with one mind and purpose. Our hearts must become tender and have compassion. We must get rid of our selfish ways of thinking and living. Selflessness, humility, and service. And here's some scripture for you all to uh, take with you. From Philippians Two verse one, is there any encouragement from belonging belonging to Christ? Any comfort from His love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. And that is everything when becoming fully equipped in Christ. That's everything you need. Or I should say everything you would want to know when becoming fully equipped in Christ, man. So put your own more God on, man, and have the attitude of Christ. I pray that everything you received in this message helps you. Go tell a family member. Go tell a friend. Go tell a stranger, man, about God. Y'all stay blessed and have a wonderful day.